Joining us now is our political contributor, Matthew Dowd, also a columnist for National Journal. You were here watching last night as well. When we were talking after the debate last night, the first thing you said was, this is a microcosm of what's happening in the country. Yeah, if you watch this debate, it's very interesting. You had Marco Rubio, the total on the attack on Washington, making tried to make Chris and Meek the sort of represented Washington. He went on the attack on Obama and said it was the Republican message of anti-Washington. And spending. <clears throat> and spending, big time on spending. And then you had Meek making the very, very energetic defense of what they did in Washington and what the Democrats did. <clears throat> And so, to me, it's the passion on both of those sides, and it ended up putting Chris, who's in the middle, a little bit in the soft and squishy middle, because the passion exists on both sides, which is it, what it is in the rest of the country. And you think uh, Rubio, who is, as I said, was a favorite of the Tea Party from the very beginning, has really um, mastered that anti-Washington message, and that's where a lot of the country is right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he came on. He's slightly ahead in this race. I think he did himself well. He's probably solidified the Republicans even more last night. But he has that disciplined message, which basically is, if you like what's going on in Washington, then don't vote for me, vote for them. And it's purely what represents it. But as we said in the piece, we're seeing mixed results for the Tea Party candidates now across the country. Sharon Angle out of Nevada has pulled a little bit ahead. Of, of Harry Reid, Christine O'Donnell way down uh, in, in Delaware, Rubio doing doing pretty well here, Rand Paul probably going to be doing okay down in Kentucky, but it's not going to be a clean sweep for the Tea Party on Election Day, which could create, uh, which means that a lot of the frustration driving them now won't go away after Election Day. Yeah, I don't think this tea kettle is going to be totally vented in this election cycle because a number of the Tea Party candidates will probably not win, and the Republicans will probably not be able to do, even if they do win, a lot. And so I think what's going to happen is after November, this anger and frustration that exists out there is only going to grow as it goes into the next well, election cycle. Well, in because if, if Republicans, as we expect, pick up seats in both the House and the Senate, maybe even take control, that's... Uh, a recipe for more gridlock. Yeah, I think absolutely what's going to happen after this November is little's going to get done in Washington and people are going to be more frustrated going into the presidential election in 2012. One other thing we've seen across the country, which you really feel here when you turn on your television, is this campaign spending. Likely to see three billion dollars spent in this election cycle, a lot of it by groups where you don't know where the money is coming from and it's all across the airwaves here. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, in an economy that's suffering, the people that are doing really well are the media can consultants because there's ad after ad after ad. You watched last night in Orlando and it's just every place you go it's a negative ad about somebody on the ballot. I think at some point there's so many ads it sort of washes over the voters and I think things like last night's debate I think have a much bigger impact than on voters than the actual ads do because there's so many in so many different places but a lot of money is getting spent. And we got a couple more coming up in Illinois and Pennsylvania in a couple weeks. Okay Matt Down, thanks very much.